everyone and welcome back. It is my pleasure to welcome Marina Harans from Wayfair on how creative sprints made us fitter, happier, and more productive. I love that title. Don't forget to type your questions at any point during the session in the right-hand panel of your screen. And now over to you, Marina. Thank you, Kevin. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm very excited to be a part of the Festival of Creative Operations. Thanks for joining this session. As uh, Kevin just said, I'm going to be presenting you a case study about Wafer and how Creative Sprint made us fitter, happier, and more productive. And that title I actually stole from a song from Radiohead, <laughs> by the way. So um, I'm going to give you a, a brief overview on, on what, what is happening on this session. Um, at the beginning, I'm going to be giving you a brief introduction about Wafer and myself. Um, afterwards, I want to give you a little bit of context on the creative team and our past problems to, to then run you through um, the creative sprints and how this uh, framework um, has been working for us. To then, in the end, what everybody wants to know, why we're now fitter, happier, and more productive. And then, of course, at the very end, we're going to have some time for questions and answers. Okay, let's get started. So, brief introduction. Hi, very nice to meet you. Um, I guess most of you know Wafer, maybe some of you don't. Um, so Wafer is the destination for all things home and a place that helps everyone anywhere create their feeling of home. Um, some key facts about us, we're one of the largest online home retailers. Um, we sell 22 million products from 16,000 plus, uh, 16, plus suppliers. We have 31 million plus active customers and we're more than 16,000 employees in North America and Europe. And now within Wafer, I lead um, creative operations in Europe where I'm focusing on operational excellence, process optimization and capacity planning across all the creative um, teams um, uh, within our org. Um, now the creative team and our past um, problems. Who is the creative team? So we're a group of um, creatives, art directors, graphic designers, copywriters, stylists, project managers, producers, etc. And together we write and design everything that our customers, suppliers, employees, and media partners see across all European marketing channels. So on the left hand side, I've put some examples. This goes from, you know, like our major campaigns on our homepage. Um, this example is Black Friday to recruiting um, posters, direct mail that we send um, per post to our customers, email uh, marketing, and of course the, the TV ads um, that we're running here in Europe. And then within the creative team, my, my team operations were basically the ones that make the ideas happen. And we're helping the creatives um, to get structured and work more efficiently and thus um, produce better work. Now, when looking at our past problems, um, I, I, I really did the exercise of writing everything down and then try to bucket them into categories. And I came up with these five, uh, with these five buckets. Um, we're gonna go now one to, to one and deep dive um, on them, but yeah, it's a, a stakeholder partnership and visibility, prioritization, capacity and resource planning, time management and team happiness. Now, in terms of a stakeholder partnership and visibility, um, we receive creative briefings from almost every department at Wafer. And I've just given you the, the, the facts and then the figures. We're a pretty big company. Um, so yeah, that, that, meant that, that means for us, we get briefings from many um, departments, brand experiences, campaigns, all the marketing channels, employer branding, and so on which makes the stakeholder management um, a complex exercise. Um, and, and there on the right, you can see that that, that was me sometimes getting briefs and saying like, Ooh, <laughs> who are you? Um, in terms of prioritization, um, deciding how to prioritize all these uh, creative briefs that we were getting is also a difficult exercise. Um, because we had little visibility into business priorities um, and thus it was hard for us to decide where to start first. And if we would approach our stakeholders individually, everybody would say, my project has priorities. So we ended up like this guy on the, on the left, I will have seven first priorities. Um, in terms of capacity and resource planning, we never really knew when the briefs um, would arrive how many would be arriving and when the project um, would need to be completed. So that made, it, that made it almost impossible for us 
to manage our creative resources and plan out capacity. We were taking on work without knowing if we had enough bandwidth um, to work on that and deliver it on time. So this guy on the right was also me sometimes when getting briefs at the same time and thinking like, are we gonna make this? The fourth bucket is um, around time management. So this working as we go model um, that we had proved uh, pretty inefficient for our team because uh, as I mentioned before, we were not able to properly plan um, their, their time and capacity and actually every day could and actually every day was a surprise in terms of briefings and deadlines coming in. And then we also noticed that this led to some weeks where our team was over capacity and then we had to quickly ramp up with freelancers in order to be able to deliver the work. And also some weeks where we had very little things to do. So if we would have known before, if we would have planned that better, we could uh, ensure a work like, you know, like a, a better balance um, of, of work, which was not happening at that time. And the last point was around team happiness. So as you can imagine, uh, our creative team wasn't really happy about this. Um, deadlines used to be really short and our creatives didn't really have time to be creative. On the other hand, our project managers were also having a, a hard time keeping things organized and make, making sure that everybody stayed in the loop. So that was a little bit our situation back at the time. Now, the time has come, the creative sprints, that's why we're here. Um, what are the creative sprints? Um, so this is Wafer's agile approach to creative production. I guess um, some of you or maybe most of you are familiar with Agile and Scrum methodology. Um, I am myself um, Agile certified practitioner and I did work Agile before joining Wafer, but it was in a complete different setup. It was um, more on the, on the side of product management and working with tech people, like with technical developers, front end, back end developers, that they were like kind of more used to this kind um, of like this way of work. Um, However, like our, our, our um, headquarters in Boston, um, the North America team um, decided to switch to, to agile approach also for creative. And that was something I was really eager on, like to see how, that, how was that gonna work? Because of course, you know, like a tech person and a creative person, they, they work a little bit differently. Um, so yeah, they, they did that in North America, it ran well. And then we decided to adapt this um, here in Europe as well. Um, and yeah, just just to, to 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 give you a little bit of the theoretical background for those of you who don't who don't know it, um, the sprints are pre-scheduled periods of time in which a defined and agreed upon scope is completed by the working team. In our case, in uh, Wafer in Europe, we're doing two-week sprints, and I will explain later on a little bit better. And in terms of, of the sprint and agile methodology, it really promotes frequent inspection and adaptation to work teamwork, self-organization and accountability. Now I'm gonna try to give you a little bit like the whole framework on how we did this. In terms of roles and responsibility, the, the roles within agile project management are the scrum master, working team and product owner. How this translated for our creative team was that the scrum master was, um, it is actually the, the project manager. So this is the person that is like the scrum expert um, it, this person acts as the facilitator and also removing impediments and roadblocks uh, throughout the process, is responsible for a high-performing self-organizing team, and also for maintaining the backlog. Backlog is also an agile word, that's the work item list, which in our case is the list of projects that we need to work on, basically like the list of all the creative briefs that, that we get. The working team, in our case, is of course the creative team, our directors, designers, copywriters, etc. They are highly collaborative, as I mentioned before, self-organizing. They decide which tools and templates to use uh, for their job. They decide, uh, they decide who does what. So basically, they're able to pick the projects that they want to work on. They create and own their time estimates and time tracking. Um, that means that they estimate themselves how much time they need for a specific project. So, you know, like they would say like, I need two days for this or one day for that. And they're also responsible for time tracking afterwards so that we're able to see their estimates versus the actuals. And in the end, they are the ones delivering the output um, committed to in, in the spring. 
And um, the third group is the product owner, which in our case are our stakeholders. The stakeholders meaning all the people that brief uh, the creative team. Um, and thus they're responsible for entering the creative briefs, but also for prioritizing the backlog, making decisions in a timely manner and providing information and business context. Now from this whole Agile and Scrum, we also took the sprint meeting culture and this is the, 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 the meetings that we're running right now. So the first of those meetings is um, the sprint planning. That's been done by the project manager and the creative team. And what happens there is that we basically decide what we're gonna work on, on in the next sprint. So we look at the backlog. Of course, the project manager has looked already before at the deadlines and already like pre-selected the things that would need to be worked on first. Uh, we would also split large projects into smaller pieces. So actionable work that we can do within this two weeks rhythm. And we assign an estimated task. So we would, we would discuss a little bit about the project. Um, the team members would raise their hands on, on the projects that they want to work on. And they would estimate their time. As I said before, like I need one day here, two days there. We would enter all of these um, and we would have a, a, a real time um, capacity planning where we can see how things are being distributed. If we see that someone has a lot of projects and someone else doesn't, then we might use the sprint plan to shift and say that like, okay, you're over capacity, we're shifting some of your projects to this other person, etc. Once the sprint planning is done, um, the project manager does a, a backlog grooming with the stakeholders. That's basically where we go back to them and present them the list of the things where we will be working on on the next sprint. Um, um, this allows them to understand our um, capacity and resources. And this is also the place that we use to um, collaborate with them on prioritization. For example, if we have projects, um, or two big projects that need to be delivered kind of at the same time, and we know that we cannot manage it, the project manager we, will use this time to discuss with them, understand business priorities and make a decision on, okay, we'll tackle this one first and this one later, or maybe, this project can be shifted to the next sprint so that we have a little bit more air this, this sprint. So these are the things discussed in there. Then when this is done, team knows how to do what to do. Stakeholders know what is gonna be done. And then we start the sprint. And when we start the sprint, we run daily standups um, with the project manager and the creative team. These are very short meetings of 15 minutes happening early in the morning where um, the each team member would explain quickly what was done yesterday to contribute to the sprint, what is the plan for today, and if there are any problems or impediments where the project manager could help um, solve. Like, I don't know, I'm still missing these assets or these images or whatever, like that would be discussed in there. Project manager can help uh, mitigating uh, these issues and then the team can keep on working. After the daily standup, right after, um, there's a creative review that's run directly by the creative team. Um, and it's an opportunity for them to share the work they are doing and gather peer feedback and feedback from their managers. Um, and yeah, the managers can see their, what, what they're working on and kind of like give feedback and approve it before we deliver our, our work to the stakeholders. And then at the very end of, um, of the spring, we would do a retrospective um, with the project manager and the creative team and ideally the stakeholders. Sometimes we, they are involved, sometimes they are not in our case. And what happens in this retrospective is that the team discusses what went well and what could be improved. And for those things where we notice there's room for improvement, um, we would write down an, an action list and assign owners for them to you know, like go and try to sort this out and then improve uh, within the upcoming sprints. So it's this idea of always inspecting, adapting and improving um, for the future sprints. Here, um, um, a graphical overview on how that works. Um, for us, um, maybe it's a little bit easier to digest if you see it like this. Um, so before the spring starts, we would have a week of a spring planning. As you see there, like we have a couple of days where the PMs would uh, prep the backlog. On Thursdays, we are doing this spring planning meeting where the team basically, um, where we are assigned the projects to the team and we know what we are been working on. On Friday, we present this to the 
stakeholders on the backlog booming and reprioritize things if needed. And then on Monday of the week after, we start the sprint, which goes in our case, as I mentioned before, for two weeks. Um, the stakeholders brief, uh, like submit their briefs with enough time in advance so that we can plan for the next sprint. And of course, during the second week of the sprint, we're already prepping for the next sprint. So there's no, there's no gap between sprints. Like it's, we do one sprint, next one, next one, and so forth. Now, the last element of our sprint system is the focus factor. This represents the amount of time um, a team member can be assigned to work on projects in a sprint. Why this? Um, so basically, in our case, we have this 10 days per sprint, but we cannot assume that people can work fully the 10 days on projects because there are other things that we need to bear in mind. There are team meetings, there are company meetings, there are development uh, projects, etc. So the way that we are accounting for that is with this focus factor. And there you can see the formula. So it's focus factor, time days, and then you get the sprint days. Now with our example of the 10 days per, per sprint, a person that has a 0.7 focus factor, um, that means that this person can work seven days per sprint on projects and three days for non-project related work. Within this focus factor, they, they, they will be adjusted also if um, the team members are out of office. So for example, this same person with a 0.7, um, if this person is during a sprint two days out of office, then the formula is 0.7 times eight days. Um, that means that we can assign this person 5.6 days of work in the, in the sprint. And the rest of the time is actually the non-project uh, work um, time and the out of office. Now, this was really fast <laughs> and I'm Spanish and I speak especially fast as well. But I, I hope it landed a little bit how, how we're running the system at Wayfair. And now I want to explain to you why we're now fitter, happier, and more productive. So do you remember our past problems? Who are you? I have seven priorities, uh, the resources. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm gonna deep dive again in each of these five buckets and show you the benefits that we've seen with the, with the spring system. In terms of a stakeholder partnership and visibility, they, our stakeholders have now designated points of contact for the creative team. And this is because before within a stakeholder group, many people would be briefing us and they were actually not even connected together, like, you know, like on, on the priorities. And then we didn't really know. Right now we have a designated point of contact for a stakeholder group. And this person is in charge of prioritizing within their, 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 their department. The, the, the projects that we need to work on. And this is already great. Um, they know our sprint calendar and when they need to enter their briefs so that we can schedule the work. We have a lot more face-to-face -face meetings that I mentioned already before. They know when their work has been scheduled and when we're delivering on their briefs. And this increased transparency has led to stronger relationships and trust with our partners. So as you see there in the Giphy, cheers to partners. In terms of prioritization, and this is probably my favorite Giphy of all of them, um, our stakeholders are sharing now with us quarterly roadmaps um, so that we can see their business priorities. And this is also helping us when we see the whole backlog of projects and we know what the business priorities are, then it's a lot easier for us to prioritize the backlog at the start of each sprint. Um, we work now effectively together with, with them, with the stakeholders, um, to make sure that we tackle things in the appropriate order, considering the complexity of projects and the importance and impact on the business. So again, this guy on the left, like this is really me, like this is my face when finally everything aligns. Um, in terms of capacity and resource planning, um, we're now able to forecast the demand of the sprints farther in advance, because it's not only that like our stakeholders they might brief for the next sprint, but they are now kind of trained on briefing enough time in advance so that we have some visibility for the upcoming sprints, upcoming months. And um, thus uh, we can plan resources. We can see, do we have the right people to deliver all of that? Like do we need more people, um, et cetera. Um, we are estimating and allocating time to the team much more precisely along the focus factor, which means that we're optimizing the utilization of our creative resources. 
And we have now finally a fully functioning resource planning system, and we can wrap up and down with freelancers whenever needed. Difference from before with enough advanced planning. Like before it was really like, can you help us tomorrow? And right now, like we, we know like for the next sprints and we can we can ramp up and down with freelancers, like as I said, like with, with enough planning. In terms of time management, um, the focus factor, um, as I mentioned before, is adjusted to account for this non-project work. Um, and this is something that we didn't have before. And this is already great, you know, like, like the team members know that they, they have that buffer time for all these meetings, etc. Um, they are also estimating the time they need for their own work, which, um, you know, like it's not anymore like the project manager saying like, yeah, I think this will be done by tomorrow or um, yeah, like estimating for them. They actually own that. And if they are doing a new type of project and they want some more time for exploration or developing some different concepts, they would say that in the spring planning and we would accommodate for that. Now you would say that's not always possible because there are deadlines exactly, but um, at least we, we have that vision. And, and if we know that the creatives really need that time to, to explore a little bit, then the project manager would go back to the stakeholders and help renegotiating deadlines if that's needed. And then, as I mentioned before, the team members are also tracking their time so that we're able to see estimates versus actuals. And this is helping us to regularly assess the actual needs and efforts uh, to plan for additional resources. Like if we see that, like, you know, like we can learn, are we overestimating? Are we underestimating? Um, do people really work more time than what we thought? And this is because it's too much work. And then maybe we can use all this data to advocate internally um, for new headcounts, et cetera. So now, now we have this data before we didn't. And the last point um, <clears throat> around team happiness. So creatives finally have time to be creative. Um, they estimate their own work. We have the um, focus factor, et cetera. Uh, thanks to the ticketing system that we're using, everybody has a clear overview on what's being worked on and what's coming. And the project managers can also now properly manage projects thanks to this uh, workflow and, and tools that we have in place. So right now, the feeling uh, that the team has is, yeah, we got this. So yeah, thanks to the creative sprints, this is us now, which <laughs> looks a lot better than, than us before. Um, yeah, um, I hope that, that, that this has landed um, to you. Maybe, maybe some of you are already working agile on, on creative environments. I would be very eager to hear also your experience on this. Maybe some of you didn't know this framework and are willing to try it out um, within, within your, your teams and your companies. So yeah, let me know. We have now some time for Q&A and apologies if I talk really fast. It's just my Spanish blood. Sorry about that. No, glad you <laughs> did, you. Marina, because we've got a ton of questions. So it's okay with you. I'll just dive right in and we'll see how many we can get through. Yes. Okay, sure. Angela asked, how do you manage scope creep or iterations? Does this process cut down on partner internal client rounds of edits. So it's really about how do you manage scope creep or making changes? Okay, sorry. I'm just uh, sorry. I was just doing the technical part here of stopping the video. Can you can you repeat that, Kevin? I'm very sorry. Yep, no, sorry. no, no problem. The question okay. is, how do you, how do you manage scope creep, right? So does this process of being agile help you to cut down on the internal rounds of edits and iterations that they want to do? Yeah, because we kind of like predefine that. So, so when we do the spring planning, oh, I finally see you, Kevin. I didn't see you before. <laughs> <laughs> nice seeing you. Um, um, yeah, actually, when we do the spring planning, like we have these. Um, oh, we have. Sorry, sorry about that. I was off camera. <laughs> um, when we do the spring planning and we discuss the the project with the team we would already like kind of like establish the parameters of, of, of the project on how we would like to approach it. So um, we're able to say like, okay, let's do a concept phase here. And then, you know, like I, I mentioned before, we, we break it down into smaller chunks. And then when the PMs go back to the stakeholders, they, 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 they would present the approach that we have for that project and then would agree on, okay, so we're, we're thinking about these kind of like shoulder views or these kind of reviews. Is that enough for you? Do you want to see more? Um, so yeah, in general, we have this more collaboration that we didn't have before. And I would say, it actually has helped us reduce um, 
um, feedback rounds because before, you know, like we would be sending something and it would be coming back and we wouldn't even account for the time to rework on things. Whereas right now, already in the spring planning, we plan the time for doing the work, but we also time the plan for the review. So if the project manager says, I think we're gonna have two reviews, please account already for the time that we need to work on that. that that's something that we're doing now that we didn't do before. Excellent. The next popular question is, curious to hear how you navigate giving creative space to brainstorm and conceptualize. This feels like doing that is in conflict with sprints. No, it, it is actually because <clears throat> what we do right now, and as I say, like we break things down, um, we would like if the creative say like we really want some time for exploration here, we might create an internal brief, uh, like a ticket in our system for a sprint that is just called concept exploration. And we would give them this one sprint just to think about the concepts before we start them producing the assets or whatever it is for the for the stakeholders. Of course, sometimes it doesn't work when there are tight deadlines and, you know, like we go back to stakeholders and they say, like, no, no, I really need this. But in general, as they brief us now much more time in advance, we're able now to allocate this just one sprint for a concept um, exploration or two sprints for that. So, so yeah. Okay, great. Next question comes from Brian. <clears throat> How large is your creative team and what approach did you take to begin to roll out your agile approach? So our creative team uh, has grown a lot. Like I'm, I'm talking here when I joined Wafer um, and this first situation, uh, that was three years ago. And I think we're now like uh, three times more. Uh, right now we are around 25 to 30 people plus the bunch of freelancers, which are maybe another 20, um, <laughs> 20 to 30 people. So that, that's about the, the, the size of, of creative in, in Europe. And how how I how we planned this this rollout was like of course everybody is reactive to change from the beginning no like everybody like when when you say like we're, we're doing a change everybody at the beginning gets scared so I I did take like some months to just start seeding the idea of um, the, the the creative sprints into the minds of the people talking to the stakeholders trying to sell them what why we think that is going to be better. Um, same with the team, you know, like the creatives were also a little bit reactive at the beginning uh, on, okay, we're going to be like time out on, on, on things. Um, so I did like, I tried to do very smoothly, like talking to ones, talking to the others, explaining how things are going, building a lot of supporting material and training material, running a lot of sessions with, with the creative team, with the stakeholders, et cetera, agreeing on how would everybody, like when would everybody feel comfortable that we do this shift? And then for this shift, of course, there was like a month of transition period where still we were working hybrid, like as before working as we go, plus trying to work on the springs. And then I would say after a month of that, then we did the cut and we started working on the springs. And it's been like more than two years since now. And um, it's been working really good for us. Great. Next question from Kevin. Great name. I'm curious. <laughs> How many pro active projects are you managing in sprints at any given time amongst how many design team members for each? Oh my God, it, it, it depends. Like, you know, like there are seasonalities also. So like in seasons like Cyber Friday, like, you know, Black Friday or um, Christmas, it would be a lot more than in other seasons. Very difficult to give you a number. Like, as I said, like our briefs come um, through a ticket system. So, so we see tickets. So thinking about tickets, I think our average is around 300 per month um and and i mentioned the 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 size of the team like maybe 40 to 50 uh, counting in the 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 freelancers so that's a little bit the the scope that that we have right now yeah great unfortunately folks we're, we're about out of time but but what we can do if we didn't get your question answered we marina has volunteered for uh to take on all the questions that we couldn't get to we'll send them to her and hopefully we can get back to you with a response up here next in track one at the Festival of Creative Ops, we'll hear how to transform your creative production workflows with Celtra. If you wanna learn more about any of the sponsors supporting today's event, remember to check out the exhibition tab. Later, we will have a quick break to grab another coffee and then join the lounge tab to enjoy face-to-face -face networking in real time with industry peers. I look forward to seeing you again soon. And thank you, Marina, for a great presentation. Thank you.